Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. This morning, we're going to talk about Marvin Minsky. And Marvin Minsky was directly implicated by Virginia Roberts as one of the men that she was trafficked to via the Jeffrey Epstein criminal enterprise. And Minsky is a figure that does not get enough publicity in this case. He's a leading mind, one of the men who was uh, on the, you know, the front lines of creating AI and, you know, a very, very intelligent scientist, there's no doubt. But also, according to Virginia Roberts, the man had a dark side. This is a man who achieved great success in the world of science, but still, in his real life, when the door closed, when the shades were drawn down, was just another sick, disgusting individual. So we've talked about Marvin Minsky a little bit on the podcast before, but we have never uh, really, you know, delved in and read an article that just has to do with who Marvin Minsky is. So that's what we're going to do on this on this morning show. And the uh, article is from TheVerge.com. And the headline, AI pioneer accused of having sex with trafficking, trafficking survivor on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Marvin Minsky was named alongside several other men. This article was written by a Russell Brandom on August 9th of 2019. A survivor of billionaire, pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein testified that she was forced to have sex with MIT professor Marvin Minsky as revealed in a newly unsealed deposition. Epstein was registered as a sex offender in 2008 as part of a controversial plea, plea deal. More recently, he was arrested on charges of sex trafficking amid a flood of new allegations. And uh, look, we know the ties that Epstein had to MIT. We know that Epstein and Minsky were tight. And we know that these scientists were always on Jeffrey Epstein's island. Now again, as I've said numerous times on this podcast, if you believe Virginia Roberts about one of the accusations, you must believe her about all of them. So Marvin Minsky has escaped a lot of scrutiny. And I think that it's time that we put him on blast. So... That's why we're going to talk about it. We're talking about him in this article today because this is another one of those super powerful science types that somehow avoided all of the scrutiny, right? And we know that Minsky is dead, obviously, right? But still, that doesn't mean that he shouldn't be put on blast, that his role in this shouldn't be reported on, that, you know, his image shouldn't be tarnished by this because it should. You know, when you, when, when you engage in activities such as this, you need to be painted by that activity for the rest of your life because there's no coming back from that right there's no coming back from an engaging in sexual uh behavior with a trafficked girl there's no coming back from that you, what do you apologize for that there's no apologies for that there's no sort of uh you know going in and, and and doing good deeds to come back. there's no coming back from it so a guy like Marvin Minsky, he can have all the accolades in the world in the scientific community. I don't care if this guy found a cure for insert any disease here. It would not matter because of his actions outside of the lab or outside of the classroom are so heinous and so disgusting that anything else he does in life will never, never overshadow the fact that he was involved in not only enabling Jeffrey Epstein, but partaking in the abuse. Minsky, who died in 2016, was known as an associate of Epstein, but this is the first direct accusation implicating the AI pioneer in Epstein's broader sex trafficking network. Of course, because all of this stuff was kept on the low-low. How many other girls were forced to sleep with guys like Minsky? The unnamed girls, the girls with no face, the girls with no voice. Where are they? What? How many of them were forced into these sort of acts with men like Minsky. We'll never know. I mean, we're never going to know because it was so vast. This network was so vast and it operated for so long and so many girls came through the doors and then were discarded when they were of no use to Epstein any longer that it's, it's, it's impossible to track everybody who was involved in this at this point. Because like I've stated a, a bunch of times, 
A lot of these girls don't want to come forward. These, these unnamed girls aren't going to come forward because they feel like they've been completely shit on by the system. They feel like they've been completely ignored by the Justice Department. They feel like everybody has forgotten them. So why should they come forward when they've, they haven't even seen anyone be brought to justice? What would be the point? So the prosecution needs to start making some arrests, needs to start showing these, these girls who have not come forward yet, and the warrior, the warrior women who have come forward and bravely stood shoulder to shoulder against these people, the prosecutors need to show them that they have their back, that there's going to be movement in this case, that you're not just spinning your wheels in neutral. The deposition also names Prince Andrew of Britain and former New Mexico governor Bill Richardson, amongst others. The, accus the accusation against Minsky was made by Virginia Roberts, who was deposed in May 2016 as part of a broader defamation suit between her and an Epstein associate, a.k.a. co-conspirator, named Ghislaine Maxwell. In the deposition, Roberts says she was directed to have sex with Minsky when he visited Epstein's compound in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And this is from the deposition. Question. And other than telling you to go give the owner of this large hotel chain a massage, do you remember any other words she used to you to direct you in what you should do? Answer, not at the time, no. Question, where did, where were you and where was Miss Maxwell when she directed you to go have sex with Marvin Minsky? Mr. Edwards, object to the form. Answer, I don't know. Question, by Miss Menninger. Where did you go to have sex with Marvin Minsky? Answer, I believe it was the U.S. Virgin Islands, Jeff's, sorry, Jeffrey Epstein's island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Question, and when was that? Answer, I don't know. As part of the defamation suit, Maxwell's counsel denied the allegations, calling them salacious and improper. Representatives for Roberts and Maxwell did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Well, look, now that we've had all of these months to digest all of this, that we've had all of the time to take a look at the evidence, etc., etc., it shows you that Ghislaine Maxwell is a straight-up liar. It show, and, and you know what? I'll, I'm willing to say that. In my opinion, Ghislaine Maxwell is a straight-up liar, a devious-ass woman, and somebody who is just as responsible for all of this mayhem as Jeffrey Epstein was. I'm on record saying it, maybe before anybody else even, to be honest with you, that Ghislaine Maxwell is the brains behind this operation. I've always thought that. Everything I knew about Jeffrey Epstein from the beginning of this case did not point to criminal mastermind, okay? Or brainiac. Guy wasn't some super mind. Guy wasn't some super, uh, art, you know, mega criminal. Guy ain't Lex Luthor. It was all Ghislaine Maxwell, in my opinion, who was in charge of this whole entire operation from behind the scenes, the logistics of it anyway. A separate witness let, lent credence to uh, Robert's account, testifying that she and Minsky had taken a private plane from Teterboro to Santa Fe and Palm Beach in March 2001. Again, as I said when I did my Santa Fe series, I can confirm that. I had a source tell me that Minsky definitely was there. So... That's, not only do we have the confirmation from the other people who were aboard the plane, right? I have, a, I had it confirmed to me from a separate source that he was actually uh, definitely in Santa Fe. Epstein, Maxwell, Chef Adam Perry Lang, and shipping heir Henry Jarecki were also passengers on the flight, according to the deposition. At the time of the flight, Roberts was 17. Minsky? 73. A pivotal member of MIT's Artificial Intelligence Lab, Marvin Minsky pioneered early self-training algorithms, most notably in his 1969 book, Perceptrons. He also developed the first head-mounted head -mounted display, a precursor to modern VR and augmented reality systems. I don't care about any of that, okay? Fine and well, great. Thanks for your contributions scientifically. You're still a scumbag dirtbag. Minsky was one of a number of prominent scientists with ties to Jeffrey Epstein, who often called himself a science philanthropist, and donated to research projects and academic institutions. Oh, he sure did. But we know it wasn't because he was a charitable guy. 
We know it was all self-serving. We know that he wanted access to whatever these scientists were working on, classified or not. We know that he had his own motivations to be friends with these people, his own uh, DNA farming projects, his own baby seeding projects, etc., etc. And every relationship he made with these scientists was another means to an end for Jeffrey Epstein. Many of those scientists were affiliated with Harvard, including physicist Lawrence, Kr uh, Lawrence Krauss, who has his own sexual uh, harassment and assault allegations against him at Arizona State, by the way. Geneticist George Church and cognitive psychologist Steven Pinker. Minsky's affiliation with Epstein went particularly deep, including organizing a two-day symposium on artificial intelligence at Epstein's private island in 2002, as reported by Slate. Look, Minsky and Epstein were tight, just like Murray Gelman and Epstein were tight. There's a reason that Epstein moved to Santa Fe. I can't hammer that point home enough, folks. That point needs to be hammered home, and it needs to be talked about. The Santa Fe Institute needs to be completely and fully investigated. In 2012, Jeffrey Epstein Foundation issued a press release touting another conference organized by, uh, by Minsky on the island in December 2011. This is after his arrest, by the way. Everybody knew he was a child molester. Everybody knew he was a pedophile. And these disgusting-ass, gross-ass, decrepit-ass octogenarian scientists decide it's a good idea to go to his island and hold a conference. These people are sick, folks. The private island is alleged to have been the site of an immense sex trafficking ring, but Epstein associates have argued that those crimes were not apparent to Epstein's social relations, despite the presence of young women at many of his gatherings. Give me a break, okay? They, you know what? These people are all the same. They all have the same excuses, the same proclivities, and the same way of going about their lives. Me and you, we don't mean anything to them, okay? Our lives mean less than zero. And these trafficking victims, these trafficking survivors, these girls, they, they're worth even less. And these people have gotten away with it for so long. These scientists that everybody looks up to and gushes over and, oh, oh, Minsky's such a smart guy. Meanwhile, this guy's engaging in having sex with underage girls on some gross-ass private island with Jeffrey Epstein's bitch ass after he's been arrested. How in the world is any of that okay? These people were seen not only by me, Alan Dershowitz argued in a 2015 deposition. They were seen by Larry Summers. They were seen by George Church. They were seen by Marvin Minsky. They were seen by some of the most eminent academics and scholars in the world. And he uses that like it's some sort of shield. Oh yeah, these guys are all prominent in what they do in their professional lives. What does that mean? So they can't be sick. They can't be part of uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, trafficking ring because they're, they've, they've achieved, uh, achieved a little success in life. They have a little bit of money. F that. F that. F you. And F them. I'm ready to... I'm, I'm ready for complete and utter scorched earth with these people. All of these fake-ass scientists that run around like they care about humanity and they care about what's going on in the world and they get up on their soapbox and, you know, they virtue signal and they get up there and they tell us how bad everybody else is doing. Meanwhile, these dudes are running around with Jeffrey Epstein being involved in abusing trafficked young girls. Just remember that the next time one of these so-called elite scientists hops up on a microphone and starts preaching at you. There was no hint or suggestion of anything sexual or improper in the presence of these people, Dershowitz continued. Yeah, right, man. Again, look, Alan Dershowitz is another sick bastard. Alan Dershowitz, in my opinion, is another man who has scammed the system year after year, decade after decade, and used his powerful connections and the way he knows how to navigate the system using the loopholes to achieve his success. I'm tired of Alan. I didn't take my underwear off Dershowitz, folks. Real tired of him. And I'm real tired of people coming to his defense over political reasons. Keep your political tribalism to yourself. Nobody wants to hear that shit in this case, okay? Stop with the disinformation. Stop protecting these people who have been directly implicated. And let's get busy arresting 
these disgusting, old-ass, gross bastards who are involved with this. All of them. I want them all locked up. It's time. Enough is enough. How long are we going to sit back and build evidence? The evidence is there. The evidence is clear. Let's get to work, Mr. Berman. If you'd like to contact me, you could do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. Now, for my COVID-19 podcast, thank you so much for all of the positive reactions. And I, I hear you all loud and clear. I definitely hear you all loud and clear. You want more content as far as the COVID-19 podcast goes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll start pumping out more uh, content. Maybe we'll start doing the daily drop as well. See how that goes over for the COVID-19 where we, uh, you know, keep up to date on the newest news. With the first episode, I wanted to lay the groundwork for the origins. And now on the second episode, the headline, I mean the uh, title of the second episode is It's Just the Flu, Bro, where I'm going to go through and show you different articles from the mainstream media, the legacy media, that were detrimental to your health, okay? And it's going to show you just another reason why you cannot trust them. The legacy media just does not care about you or I. And the way they reported this story from the beginning was so irresponsible, so hurtful to the response, not only nationwide, but throughout the whole entire West, that when all is said and done and the dust settles, people must be held responsible. So on episode two, it's just the flu, bro. We're going to read through some articles from the legacy media and we're going to discuss how irresponsible their reporting was. And we're also going to discuss how irresponsible the reaction from the Western leaders, including Donald Trump, was in the beginning of all of this. So you could look forward to that coming up in the next few days. Uh, it's just the flu, bro. That episode should be out tonight, but at the latest, it will be out tomorrow morning. So I hope everybody has a fantastic day. I will be back later on with the daily drop. And if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to run by me, I'm sitting around in lockdown like the rest of you. So shoot me some emails. All right, folks, I'll talk to you all later.